you just picked up your F30 with the N20 or N26 engine, and now you're ready for your first modification. But which one do you choose first? How about a mod that increases both performance and reliability? And in today's video, we're going over two modifications that meet both of those criteria, but also come in at a great value. Let's get into it. What's up everybody, my name is Fritz and welcome to the channel. Where in today's video, we're marking the first video in a short video series that covers common fail points with the F30's N20 engine. The first two components that we're gonna switch out in today's video are probably the most prone to failure depending on how much mileage that you have. And that's going to be your charge pipe and intercooler. Now, for all intents and purposes, your stock intercooler probably won't necessarily fail or break on you, even if you tune the car, but it will cap out at its capacity, which is exactly why we're gonna go with a bigger intercooler from BRSF. This is their six and a half inch step version with HD fins. And if you're already there doing the charge pipe, which can break even under stock boost, you might as well do the intercooler as well because it's gonna save you time doing all that prep work again. And it's much easier to get this in with the charge pipe out and would probably at most add in an additional 30 minutes depending on how big of an intercooler that you get. But if you're on a tighter budget, just go ahead and get the charge pipe and then save up for the intercooler later. Now I know what you're thinking. This intercooler looks pretty beat up and that's because it's coming off of my M235i in which we put about 30,000 miles on it. So when you take that into consideration, it's in pretty good shape. When you also factor in that it did really well in our testing and comparison to the Wagner Evo 2 intercooler, this is the best value intercooler on the market and what I would recommend to 90% of the people out there. Because if you don't care about the weight savings and if you don't frequently track your car, this is the way to go. And in terms of fitment, because the N55, N20, and N26 engine all borrow the same intercooler design, this should mount up perfectly without making any adjustments or modification to the bumper or interior shroud. The charge pipe, however, does have its own unique design for the N20 and N26 engine. And if you have a manual transmission car, you will want to note that when you're making your purchase. The manual transmissions actually don't have the vacuum line on the back side of the charge pipe as the automatic transmission do. So in order to prevent any vacuum leaks, we have to cover this up with a plug that VRSF does provide. So make sure if you do have a manual that you select that when you make your purchase. But even if you consider yourself a beginner, this job is very simple and should take you at most an hour and a half. But if you're somebody who's worked on cars before, this is probably going to lead you more towards that 45 minute to 30 minute mark. So let's get right into it. Let's first secure the hood in the open position. Rather than using the map sensor's rear lever, I prefer to lift up on the locking tab from the front with a pick. Next, we can lift up on the charge pipe's top retaining clip and then pull it off. Now we can jack up the car and since switching to this long reach jack, I can tell you that lifting up cars has become so much easier, especially if they're not lowered. I brought my jack stands up to 13 and a half inches but if you're not doing the intercooler, you don't need it this high. Proceed to remove the 8mm screws holding in the under panel before removing the charge pipe's bottom retaining clip, which might be more difficult because the plastic clips don't hold the hook into place. Just do your best to pull out the bottom hook from its hole. This should allow you to disconnect the charge pipe from the intercooler. With it out, push the charge pipe slightly forward and to the side so you can rotate it up, allowing you to completely remove it. If you're only doing the charge pipe installation, you can skip forward using the chapter section below because now we're gonna remove the intercooler by disconnecting the boost pipe, which has a similar clip as the bottom section of the charge pipe. Unscrew the two T25s on the ends of the intercooler and disengage the lateral locking tabs before pulling the intercooler down. With the two intercoolers side by side, we can see a dramatic increase in size. VRSF states this intercooler is 87% larger than OEM and can support up to 800 horsepower. Another additional benefit to this all metal design is that it's also more durable, so it's more resistant to cracking under pressure 
but it's also more durable and resistant to road debris. So a better performing, more durable part at an affordable price point. What more could you ask for? When bringing in the new intercooler, we just slide it in between the bumper shroud in front and the fan in the back. Just push them out of the way slightly and the intercooler will go right up. As for the hardware, VRSF includes new screws and rubber washers that go in like this with the intercooler in between the rubber washer and screw head. Then reattach the boost pipe and ensure it's locked in. When preparing the charge pipe, I used thread locker on the set screws so they don't back out before tightening it down with a 5mm Allen head. If you plan to utilize a water methanol setup, you can skip the thread locker but just make sure that you've tightened down your set screws as much as possible and check on them periodically. Manual transmissions also have to cover up this port with the supplied plug and hose clamp, while automatics have a hose that connects here. We can tighten this one down all the way, as we shouldn't need to service it, and nothing will interfere with it once installed, but I still positioned it in a reachable location. With the lower portion of the charge pipe in the installed position, which has this notch up, slide in one hose clamp facing up on the passenger side followed by the coupler, which will properly guide in the bottom pipe into place once it's in the groove. Then snug down the clamp, but loose enough to adjust it once it's in. To change over the map sensor, unscrew the two T25s, and while it's out, let's clean the sensor before installing it onto the VRSF charge pipe with the supplied hardware, which are three millimeter Allens, and have it pointing towards the engine once it's installed. If you want, you can also reuse your old gaskets, but since this car is over 100,000 miles, I just got new ones. In either case, use some fresh oil to lubricate the gasket, and you'll want the open section to face down the pipe, and once it's in, it should fit flushly like this. The clip can be removed by lifting it over its locking tabs, then slide it onto our new one, with the pins also facing down the pipe. Once engaged, the locks should fall into the retaining holes. We'll do the same thing on the bottom part, but it has this plastic clip we need to push out. I also noticed some oil collecting here. I'll monitor this, but perhaps we'll need an oil catch can in the future. The gasket and clip go on as they did at the bottom side with the lip and tabs facing up the pipe. Now we can insert the bottom pipe from the top and connect it to the intercooler. In order to get better leverage, let's put on the under panel and bring down the car. But depending on how tall you are, you might prefer this working height. Did I mention how much I love this jack? I felt like a caveman being introduced to a cell phone it's even easier to maneuver than my old jack. But getting back to our charge pipe, install the other hose clamp in the same orientation as the other one before bringing in the charge pipe. Once it's fully in the coupler, attach it to the throttle body. Reconnect our sensor and tighten down our clamps. Because of this connection, my clamps are slightly off center but still fully in reach. And congrats, your charge pipe and intercooler are all in, giving you the peace of mind and improved performance that comes along with it. And just like that, we've upgraded the charge pipe and intercooler on your BMW. And I'm pleasantly surprised to experience some performance gains in here as well. Specifically when I'm exiting the freeway and already on the off ramp, if I'm downshifting from fourth to second or fifth to third, right after the gear shift, the power is immediately there. Before, it felt like I would kind of had to just 
power through or push through the initial lag or soft spot in power before it would really let on. But now it's all right there. So I would highly recommend that if you're going to do these two modifications that you do them together or at least do the charge pipe first. Because if you have this increase in performance with a stock charge pipe, it's only a matter of time before it cracks. But this should be no surprise to us at all, especially after last week's video when we ran the comparison between Wagner's intercooler and VRSF's. In some instances, VRSF actually beat out Wagner's intercooler, but in the instances where Wagner beat the VRSF intercooler, it wasn't that far ahead. So if you wanna see the results of that test, click the link in the top right hand corner. But if you have any additional questions, please leave it for me in the comment section. If you need any of the resources, it's gonna be down in the description links. And don't forget to leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. And I'll see all of you in the next one.